Hello, everyone. I'm Ding Jili from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. This talk will introduce our work, Bfrost, Analysis and Optimization of Network IO Tags in Confidential VMs. Data security is crucial for cloud computing. More and more applications such as key value store, AI inference, and financial service are processing sensitive data in the cloud. Traditionally, a compromised hypervisor can steal arbitrary VM data because all VM memory is accessible to and controlled by the hypervisor. Unfortunately, many VM escape CVEs are disclosed in recent years. As a result, regulations such as GDPR have been established to enforce data security. To address the security issue, CVM is proposed and becoming popular in data centers. Compared to traditional VMs, CVMs provide good security by enabling OS-level confidential computing. Specifically, each guest OS in the CVM is hardware isolated from outside. CPU states such as registers are protected during the VM exits, and memory isolation is enforced with hardware encryption. Overall, we can divide the memory into two security types. The first is a private type that is only accessible to CVM, and the other is a shared type that is also accessible to untrusted hypervisors. Besides the security, CVMs also provide good compatibility for ease of integration with the existing infrastructure as a service and also be transparent to application workloads. Another background, terabit Ethernet is approaching. As shown in this figure, the speed of modern network devices continues to grow. For example, NVIDIA has published its 400 gigabit Ethernet SmartNIC. In contrast, the growth speed of CPUs is stagnant, and they are becoming performance bottleneck, as shown in this figure. Complex application logic and I/O processing consumes significant CPU resources, leading to fully loaded CPUs. The last background: parallel I/O networking in CVMs. Parallel I.O. is a primary I.O. virtualization choice for modern cloud providers. As shown in this figure, a typical usage is to deploy a pooling-based user space I.O. backend for high performance. For I.O. event notification, hypervisor notifies the VM while virtual interrupts, which may trigger VM exits. And CVM's VM exits have higher latency compared to traditional VM due to the longer VM exit path. As for I.O. data transfer, hypervisor copies I.O. data to and from VM memory. However, since the hypervisor cannot access private memory, CVMs require bounce buffer to perform as an I.O. staging memory. For the I.O. data protection, usually end-to-end -end encryption such as TLS is enforced on the I.O. data. Besides, there is also internal TLS support for enhanced performance and extended features. Next, we evaluate the end-to-end -end network performance of CVM. We use the network I.O. intensive application as benchmarks and take the traditional VMs as a baseline. The test bed configuration is shown as below. We denote the AMD SUV VM without posted interrupt as CVM, and denote the simulated Intel TDX VM with posted interrupt as CVM plus PI. Posted interrupt is a hardware feature that can eliminate VM access during virtual interrupt deliveries. As shown in the right figure, both CVM and CVM Plus PI has poor network performance. Compared to their baseline, the overhead can up to 30%. Then we define and quantify the CVM LTEX, which greatly impacts performance. CVM LTEX and application workloads share the limited CPU execution time. We define the CVM LTEX as CPU time spent on security protections and intrinsic network I.O. procedures, where application workloads is application spend the CPU time on the business logic and payload processing. That is, more CPU time is spent on the CVM LTEX, the worse the performance will be. Further, we classify the CVM IO tags into three types. First is the VM access tag, which is determined by the frequency of guest host interactions. And second is the bounce buffer tags, 
which is determined by the size of IO data transport. Third is the packet processing tax, whose CPU consumption is determined by the number of packets to be processed. We then break down the CPU and tax using memcached as an example. As shown in this figure, the non-red components in both uh, histograms show that the CML tax consumes more than half of CPU time in CVMs. And compared to the baseline, the overhead mainly comes from the VM axis tax and the bounce buffer tax. Besides, packet processing tax also consumes a large portion of CPU time. Then we analyze each type of CML tax one by one. First, the last say VM axis tax. It is introduced by the CVM protection on CPU state. For instance, when a VM exit happens, the trusting firmware may save and clear registers, which can add large CPU cycles to guest host word switches. As shown in the figure, CVM consumes about 6,000 cycles more than the baseline. And if without the posted interrupt support, auto interrupt can cause frequent VM exits. In our evaluation, the CVM can trigger about 20 times more VM exits per second than the CVM plus PI. The takeaway here is that VM exits can take up a large portion of the CPU time of CVM. Fortunately, posted interrupt can minimize the performance impact of VM exit types, which will be supported soon on next generation CVM hardware. Second, the bounce buffer tax analysis. Traditional VM memory is shared with the hypervisor so that hypervisors copy packets directly from guest host shared memory, involving only one copy. However, CVM memory is set to private by default. Hypervisor cannot access packets in private memory. As a result, CVM copies packets to a pre-established IO staging memory called bounce buffer. Then the hypervisor copies the packets from the bounce buffer, involving two copies. As a result, the additional copy means that larger IO data size can lead to more CPU time cost. The takeaway here, bounce buffers can consume a large portion of the CPU time of CVMs. For performance, it is necessary to avoid bouncing large size IO data. Third is the packet processing tax. As shown in this figure, packet processing comprises operations such as header passing, encapsulation, and decapsulation. The RX example figure shows that the received packet is first decapsulated into MAC, TCP, and IP headers, and then extract payload for the application. Because every packet needs to be processed, more packets leads to more CPU time cost. So the takeaway here, packet processing consumes a large fraction of the CPU time, and reducing the number of packets to be processed can mitigate its performance impact. To reduce the CVM IO tax and improve the network performance, we propose our design Bfrost for CVMs. Bfrost is a rainbow bridge from the Norse mythology. A rainbow bridge is metaphorically represents the secure and rapid IO data transfer between the CVM and untrusted hypervisor. We share the same threat model with the existing CVMs. The TCB only consists of CPU hardware and firmware. Third channel attacks and denial of service attacks are out of scope. We also assume that CVMs protect IO data with end-to-end -end encryption and do not voluntarily leak data. Bfrost has four design goals. First and foremost is the performance. Because VM exit tax is largely reduced in the future by the hardware, Bfrost focus on reducing the bounce buffer tax as well as package processing tax as much as possible. At the same time, it must maintain the same level of security guarantees as existing CVMs. As for universality and practicality, BFORCE must be applicable to diverse platforms and operating systems. Besides, it should be transparent to applications and incur non-intrusive and minor modifications. However, the out-of-place hardware memory encryption and decryption disallows such zero copy. In the reality, as shown in this figure, the page containing the data, when it is converted to another security type, the data is lost so that a hypervisor can no longer get the correct content. Second, the vanilla procedure of packet processing is to pass each packet to the network stack as is, resulting in too many packets to be processed in the network stack. 
existing optimizations such as GRO, reassemble package before the network stack, leading to reduced package to be processed in the network stack. However, there is still costly package pre-processing in the device driver layer, still leading to the fully loaded CPU. Fortunately, we find three observations and insights to help us address the above challenges. First, as shown in this figure, either the end-to-end -end encryption alone or the private memory protection alone is sufficient to assure data security. Applying both protections to the IO data is also secure, but it is redundant, and especially for the performance-critical IO data. Second, end-to-end -end encryption has a steady effect of moving the payload location. Currently, the typical usage is to do the in-place encryption, then bouncing, as shown in this figure. The in-place encryption results in the redundant protection and the bouncing cost. And we find that a possible usage is to use out-of-place encryption and decryption, as shown in this figure. The L data is directly encrypted to the shared memory, resulting in no redundant protection or bouncing. The third, IO backends usually have plenty of residual CPU resources available. As shown in the right figure, CPUs running CVMs with CPUs are usually fully utilized due to complex and multiple application logic and IO processing. In contrast, the CPUs dedicated for IO backends are usually underutilized because they're focusing on the simple logic such as routing. Based on the above observations, we propose architecture and hello design for Bfrost. The first design is zero copy encryption and deduplication that eliminates payload bouncing text by leveraging the first two observations. As shown in this figure, the payload is directly encrypted to the dedicated shared memory and then copied to the hypervisor memory, involving only one copy. Similarly, there is also only one copy in the Rx direction. To minimize modification and reuse CVM allocators, we create dedicated NUMA nodes Call ZCD NUMA to serve as a dedicated shared memory. As a result, ZCD components reside in the internal TIS layer and the front end driver layer. Next, since the ZCD NUMA memory is shared with the untrusted hypervisor, we propose the one time trusted read to defend against the TOC TOU attacks. Our principle is to only trust the first read from the shared memory. As a result, it can enforce protections in both TX and RX directions. Due to the time limit, we will not mention the details here. Please refer to our paper for more details if you are interested in it. Third, pre-receiver packet reassembly. It can reduce packet processing text by leveraging the third observation. Specifically, we offload the reassembly logic from the front-end driver to the back-end, freeing up precious recipe resources for the CVM to process more application workloads. Putting it all together, I will show the packet receiving and sending workflow. In the Rx direction, when incoming packets arrive at the backend driver, PRPR reassembles the same flow packets into a larger one, and then flushes it to the CVM. The encrypted payload can be flushed directly to the ZCD NUMA memory and kept in it while the plain text header is still bounced to the private memory by the OTTR. Finally, the TRS layer decrypts the payload directly from the ZCED NUMA memory to the application's private memory. In the reverse order, application starts to send out payload for network I.O. The TRS layer encrypts payload directly from application's private memory to the ZCED NUMA memory. Then the CVM prepares packets for backend driver. The encrypted payload is still kept in the shared memory while the header is built in the prime memory, then bounced to the shared memory. Eventually, the backend driver obtains packets from shared memory. In summary, since the VMX text is solved by posting interrupt on next generation hardware, we first focus on the other two texts. The bounce buffer text is largely reduced by the ZCD design by eliminating payload bouncing and defend against the TOC TOU attacks using the OTTR. As for packet processing text, it is also significantly reduced by the PRPR design 
which offloads package reassembly logic to the network I.O. backend. Finally, we build a prototype for Bifrost and evaluate its performance improvement. The implementation complexity of our prototype is very low. We introduced only 800 lines of code in Gas Linux and 700 lines of code in the I.O. backend. To minimize the VMX attacks in the SUV VM, we apply the reduced interrupt frequency optimization for the CVM, denoted as CVM plus RNF. The plus ZC denotes only applying the first two techniques, and plus PRPR means only applying the third technique. The test bag configuration is shown in this table. The AMD server and the Intel server is back to back. The test bag configuration is shown in the right table. AMD server and the Intel server is back to back wired through a 200 gigabit Ethernet. Due to the time limit, we only show the results of application benchmarks. Y axis shows the overhead compared to the traditional VMs, which we set as baselines. Lower is better, and negative overhead means performance improvement. Overall, BFORS can achieve large performance improvement both over baseline and vanilla CVMs. Also, improvement increases as the data size grows. Besides, CVM plus RF without post interrupt still have much VM access text, which explains the smaller improvements than the CVM plus PI. As for NGX scenario, because the TX traffic is dominant, PRPR has little effect, so that the BFROS prototype cannot outperform the baseline. However, the overhead can still be cut to nearly zero. To explain the aforementioned performance improvements, we further break down the CPU utilization, taking memcached as examples. The first question is, where does the improvement come from? As shown in these figures, the red component shows the application workload CPU time, which is largely increased from 43% to 74%. This is due to the large decrease in both bonds buffer tax as well as package processing tax. The second question is, how is backend CPU utilization impacted by the PRPR? We can show that the BFROS can spend at most 19% more CPU time than the baseline. However, the backend CPU is still not fully loaded, so there is no negative impact on backend processing. Please refer to our paper for more evaluation details. In conclusion, we provide the first systematic CVM LTAX analysis for network intensive CVMs. We also propose a new parallel IO design called BFROST, which eliminates redundant bounces for network packets, maintains the same level of security guarantees as the existing CVMs, and also greatly reduces packet processing cost in CVMs. Our prototype significantly improves the network IO performance of CVMs, and even outperforming the traditional VMs by up to 21%. A BFROS prototype is now available on GitHub. Please feel free to try it out. That's all and thanks for listening. Please feel free to ask questions.